All right, we are going to look at hypothesis testing, which I like to call you're a liar test. Um, this is actually pretty interesting where maybe you want to test something that somebody's claiming, such as their, their toothpaste whitens your teeth better than the leading brand, or there really is three ounces of chips in the bag, not just air, right? So, um, I find this topic very, very interesting. So you can have three, as you can see here, uh, different types of tests. You can have a two-tail where typically in the wording they'll say, um, is there a difference? Is there really a difference between this toothpaste and the others? So in other words, some may be below, some may be above. Um, One-tail test is if we only care if they're overfilling the chip bags or they're underfilling the chip bags. Okay, so right tail greater than, left tail less than. And so basically what you do, there's a procedure that, let's go back to the bag of chips. So let's say you believe, you believe that they are not putting the amount of chips that they say they are putting in the bags. Well, what do you do? You'd go out and get a sample and eat a lot of chips, right? That's what I'd do. And you would measure the amount in so many bags, right? And maybe you'd get samples from a bunch, bunch of different stores. And that sample that you get is what's called the test statistic. All right, so you come up with a test statistic and you compare that to your level of significance. Okay, so your level of significance, typically this is um, given as alpha, okay, so an alpha value, and this is, well, you know, 100%, you're not going to get the exact amount they say are in the bags of chips because some machines will be a little off, right? But how much error can you stand? And that's what we call a type 1 error, or alpha is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when you should not have. So in other words, maybe you just got a bunch of bags of chips that didn't have a lot of chips in them. All right, you just got a bad sample. Where a type two error is the probability of not rejecting the null when you should have. So in other words, maybe you got every bag of chips you got, they put the amount they said they were going to, but again, maybe you just got a good sample. Um, typically, when you find the test statistic, you like to know what's the probability if what they're telling me is true, I would, I would expect to get that. That's what's called a p-value. And a lot of times we like p-values to compare with our alpha better than or comparing our test statistic with a critical value. Critical values are um, what you looked up last chapter with confidence intervals, okay, either in the Z or the T table, we're going to do both of them, where a p-value, a, a lot of people like better because that's a probability. So if the probability is high, is greater than whatever our alpha that will be given, then we fail to reject the null because we would expect to get with that high of a probability. If the p-value is less than alpha, then we say, well, if what they're telling us is true, why is this probability so low? So we would reject the null. How do you come up with a test statistic? You go out and you get a bunch of bags of chips and you find the average, the sample mean, minus what they're telling you, the population mean, and then over the population standard deviation. Um, if you know the population standard deviation, or if you have a very large sample, which they say large is over 30, then you can do a z-test. And so you put all this stuff in, in your calculator, you get a z-value, you go look on the z-table, right? And so the z-table is going to give you that probability. If you have a small sample, or you do not know the population standard deviation, so you have the sample standard deviation you can find, right? Then you use the T table. So your test statistic becomes the T. And we talked about this last with confidence intervals. You would go look those values up in the T table. 
So I hope you enjoy this topic. Like I said, it's it's one of my favorite ones because you can prove or disprove something somebody's telling you.